Hello everyone and welcome to another um, video tutorial about the Vagrant Virtual Machine. Today we're going to be looking at networking and we'll be looking at three different types of networking. So we have the port forwarding approach, we'll have the dynamic IP address setup and also the static IP address setup. So the first one, uh, the port forwarding, is essentially when you will use your host host machine's uh, IP address and use the a port from that to go directly to a port within the virtual machine. The second one will be the dynamic IP address. So your DHCP server or router will give an, a free IP address to the machine automatically. And the third option, the static IP address, that's where we will actually set the IP address we want in the configuration and as long as there are no other networks on the device um, using the IP address then there won't be any conflict and uh, it'll be good to go. So I'm just going to jump into the video now. Thanks for watching. So I'm just starting off with an empty directory as you can see here and what we're going to do uh, for the first command is run the vagrant in it, which will uh, initialize and create the vagrant file which is where all our configuration lives. So to get into that we're going to be using the uh, nano text editor so you type in sudo nano and then the vagrant file and we'll be doing our editing within the config block here and we need to go down to the config.vm.box section so I'll just take you down and we're going to change this to the uh, Ubuntu 14.04 64-bit trusty Taha version. Now you can of course use uh, another image or operating system of, as your choice but I have this one installed from previous tutorials so I'm just going to be using that one today. So it's Ubuntu and then it's just trusty 64. So in the same area we're going to tap into the config again. So config within the VM and this time we'll be looking at the network section. So the first one I'll be showing you is uh, forwarded ports or uh, port forwarding um, as you may, may know it. So in here type in forwarded port. That's the first parameter. The second parameter is the guest port so that the machine we're about to spin up which port that will be listening on. So I'll be using a web server, a basic Nginx configuration which by default listens on port 80. So I'll be using port 80 and then we need to decide how we get to that port from our host machine which we're on at the moment. So you type in host and I'm just going to do 80, 89, as I f have a few other services running on those ports. Um, so that's it for now. So you press Control O and enter to save, and then Control X will take you back to the terminal. And now what we need to do is run the vagrant up command. And the this will now bring the machine up. So as you can see, it's importing the base box, the Ubuntu Trusty 64-bit version. And we will also see the um, port forwarding setup as it brings the box in. So under the uh, forwarding port section, we have our 80 to 89. And you can also see there's a 22 here to 22.22 which as I'm sure you'll know is uh, SSH, which you can see down here. So that's just the default one that, that comes with the box. So you can SSH in once it's configured. Okay, brilliant. So now that's up and running, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the box and I'm gonna, inst I'm gonna install um, Nginx. So we've got something to look at. Okay, fantastic. So. All we need to do is sudo apt get install minus y nginx. 
and this will just install Nginx. It will start the service running on port 80, which is perfect for what we need. So we're just going to uh, exit out of that, back into our terminal. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the sensible browser command. I'm going to go to HTTP localhost, and I'm going to be going to port 8089. And what this will now do is this will open our browser. And as you can see, it's uh, localhost port 8089. Welcome to Nginx. So that's your first networking option. Now there are a few disadvantages to this because if you have multiple services running, um, you know, you could soon run out of ports or it could cause issues, that kind of thing. So I'm actually going to show you a the second option. And um, what this option will be is um, an IP address. So we won't be forwarding ports, we'll actually be giving the machine itself an IP address um, that we can access through the browser. So we need to go back into our Vagrant file and here what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this network uh, config one or the parameters, sorry. And now what we're going to be doing is changing the first parameter to private network and this time the second parameter we're going to be putting is as the uh, DHCP so what this does is this will ask your sort of DHCP server which is normally um, within the router for an IP address that, ha that, uh, that hasn't been taken by any other machines on the network so that's all we have to do and again we just have to do control O and enter to save and then control X and because the vagrant machine is running what we can do is we can run the vagrant reload command that will bring the machine down or halt the machine and then it will refresh the configuration and then run the vagrant up again so as you can see here it's clearing any previously set forwarded ports um, and then within the forwarding ports block we've only got the default SSH here and we'll just wait for that to load up and then we'll still have the Nginx server running so again we can run the the sensible browser command Well, actually, sorry, first of all, what we need to do is we need to jump back into the box to get the IP address that is being given from the DHCP server. So I'm going to do Vagrant SSH into the machine. And what we can do is now, if we run IF config, now this will be different if you're not on a Ubuntu machine, but essentially you need to get the networking information. So what we're looking for is the etho1 and we want the inet address which is its, is its IP address so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'll exit out of here and now what we can do is we can run the the sensible browser command so I'm just going to do HTTP and then I'm going to jump straight into there I'm going to do enter that will open the browser and as you can see here it's opened it up this is um, within a private network range it does look like a public IP address if you haven't seen this one before but the I will leave some information in the description for you this is a similar to a 192.168 address so don't worry it's just local and if we pop back into this one now and refresh that we'll see that the port 8089 forwarding port configuration is, is not set up anymore so I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to jump back into the terminal now you may want the same IP address every time a static IP address instead of a dynamic IP address assigned by the DHCP server so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back into the uh, vagrant file and we're going to go again down to the config.vm.network section and this time instead of the second parameter being type we're going to be adding a 
IP parameter and in here we can set up the IP address we want. So of course this will be the private local network range so you could either do the 10.10.10 .10 for example you could do the 172 that we just saw earlier or you could do the 192.168 what we're actually going to do is we're going to go within the the 10 range and I'm just going to do what I did earlier so 10.0.0.10 and obviously this may not work if you have a device on your local network with the same IP address. So before cho before choosing this one, make sure you check that the IP address isn't in use elsewhere. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do Control O and Enter, and then exit out. And again, we need to run the Vagrant Reload, which will bring the machine down. Uh, go through the new configuration and then set it up. And then, of course, we'll be running our sensible uh, browser command, which I'm enjoying at the moment. So we're going to just pop back up to that. And then, as remember, we have the 10.0.0.10. Run that command. That will open our default browser on the system. And as you can see here, we are now set to that IP address and if I go back to the 172 that we were assigned by the DHCP server earlier on and I refresh that it will take a few seconds but you'll then notice that that is actually not running either as before with the forwarded ports so Vagrant has now gone back through the config file the Vagrant file and it's made any changes so that's it's not available this is fantastic so we're back onto this one now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one more thing and that is how to have um, a sort of host name so instead of remembering the IP address you may have you know multiple machines as I have set up in my previous tutorial which I'll put a link in the description so to make life easier we're going to just we're going to again use our nano text editor and we're going to jump into the host file so it's on Ubuntu it's ect slash hosts now as you'll see here I actually have this one set up already so it's the 10.0.0.10 .10, and that's vagrant.test so what that means is when you type that into your browser it will check the host file first and it will it will see this and then it will go straight to that IP address so I'm just going to press control and exit to get out of that because we haven't made any changes and we can run the sensible browser command again and it's vagrant.test and here we go so you can see that this is run and it's gone straight through to the default nginx page and if we go back here and refresh this this IP address still works because the machine is running on this local IP address so those are the three types um, of networking options that you have I personally would recommend the the second option which was the DHCP server only because the network will assign you an, an automatic IP address so there won't be any conflicts on the network although I completely understand if you need a static IP address um, if you're you know if you have code or something like that relying on it then of course use that one but just give them a give them a try and see what you think and thank you very much for listening and I will see you next episode I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm really, really grateful for your watching. I hope that it's helped you out. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments and I will try my best to get back to you uh, as soon as possible with, uh, with an answer that should help you out. Now, I am making these videos um, to help people 
with Vagrant and in the future we'll be looking I'll be looking at other stuff as well but if you have any constructive criticism or any any tips you'd like to share with me then I am still new to this uh, video game so um, making videos sorry please you know please let me know in the comments I'd, I'd be really really grateful to hear what you think and and also if if the videos are actually helping you then please you know like or subscribe tell your friends um, because I think Vagrant is such a fantastic development tool um, I really want to get people using it it's helped me so much and I feel it could help other people as well so again I'm really really grateful for you guys for watching uh, and, and getting this far and I'll, I'll, I'll see you in the the next episode.